like most of you watching this channel, my favorite part of these types of builds is definitely the creative process. But behind the scenes, there's a ton of work that isn't quite as exciting. Just finish welding and grinding and prepping everything for the next step. And last week, I spent a lot of time trying to get this prepared for the next step because today, I wanna to try to make some pretty big moves. We need to finish boxing in a bunch of our hinges. We need to button up a lot of the small details. And then we're gonna pull this axle out and we're gonna convert it into a proper trailer axle. To get everybody up to speed, this is a axle from a 2003 Land Rover Discovery. In fact, it's from that 2003 Land Rover Discovery. And the reason I'm using this axle isn't because it's the best or it's the cheapest or whatever, it's because I have it. So if, for a budget build, in my opinion, budget usually means you're using as much free stuff as you can, stuff that you have laying around, and this place is covered with Toyota, Jeep, and Land Rover parts. So what we're trying to do is take stuff that is taking up space and make it add value whenever we go camping by having a Frankenstein camp trailer that we built ourselves. So in order to convert this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna lob off all the brackets we don't need. We're gonna take these wheel speed sensor holes and hopefully I can add a grease zerk to them. We're gonna try to build our own little adapters for that. And then once we have everything the way we want it, we're gonna stuff it back underneath the trailer and we are going to get rid of the Watts link and we're gonna go to a pan hard bar, which is good and bad, but we'll get to that in a little bit. of this Land Rover axle in this project is completely experimental and I'm not married to this axle in any way. So if we decide in the future that the center section hangs down a little bit too low, we can cut it out and put a tube straight across or I might decide that I wanna build some sort of a independent suspension from scratch. So this whole trailer is experimental. I'm just throwing a whole bunch of parts at it to see what works in the field, to see what doesn't work. So on version 2.0 of this trailer, we'll have a bunch of different upgrades and notes. And this is not the only trailer I'm gonna build. I've got ideas for a whole bunch of other types of trailers to build based on my thoughts from using this trailer throughout the summer. I guess the idea that I'm trying to invoke here is when you build projects, it doesn't have to be the last thing you build and it has to be something that lasts a lifetime. Just throw some stuff together, get out, have fun, take notes, and then decide what improvements you would make if you were to do it all over again. My original plan with these unit bearings was gonna to be to add a greaser so I could pump grease into them, but it's not necessary. It's a little bit of extra work and I would have to put a vent hole somewhere. Otherwise, I couldn't get any grease in or out of them. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna build block off plates. And before we install them, I'm gonna to try to work 10 or 15 squirts of grease into these unit bearings. Theoretically, they don't need grease anyway, but I just figure they're old, they're used. Let's give them some fresh grease to try to give them a little bit more service life. Sometimes progress is slow, but it's always satisfying. And we have shocks on the back of this trailer now. We have the upper pan hard bar mount made, but now we need to make our own lower pan hard bar mount. You don't see me do this very often in the shop, but every once in a while, I'll break out the cardboard 
and I will try to create some sort of a bracket. The unfortunate thing is Barnes four wheel drive who makes the rest of this stuff that we're using today makes a bracket that would work perfect for this scenario. I thought I had one in the back of the shop and I do not. So we are gonna build our own from scratch. I'm going around the shop right now. I'm grabbing whatever chunks of 3 16 I have laying around that we can use. And I'm hoping that I can find just the right parts and pieces to be able to build this entire bracket out of 3 16 This was a pretty small mistake, but it just takes extra time. Instead of taking five minutes to install a pre-made bracket, I'm gonna take an hour or two and have to build something from scratch. Next time, I'll make sure I have everything I need on hand so I don't have to burn a bunch of extra time making stuff that I don't need to make. But at the end of the day, this is a series about fabrication and this is nothing that we can't handle. There's an unfortunate side effect to using a single axle on a trailer like this off-road versus a double axle, and I never hear anyone talk about it, and that's why we were at the whiteboard. We're gonna talk about it. This dovetails perfectly into the compromises we just made with the rear suspension. So first off, single axle trailer equals less, art less articulation. Doesn't matter how soft you make the suspension and all that, the reality is when this tire goes up to go over an obstacle, the whole chassis is gonna move with it because there's not four tires on the ground. You need the other three tires on the ground to help keep your chassis nice and level, just like a four by four truck or a Jeep, Toyota, whatever it is. But in this case, we're gonna lose all of that articulation because it's all gonna get lost through our hitch connection. The hitch connection is gonna be so easy to turn and spin that there's not gonna be enough resistance to try to make the chassis nice and flat while you're going up and over obstacles. So basically the only things that we can control are gonna be the axle's ability to go side and side, or <laughs> side and side, side to side, or up and down. So we may, we're may we controlling that with a pan hard bar. But I wanna talk about the Watts link. The Watts link that comes on these Land Rovers from the factory is brilliant. It's definitely what I should have done here. I should have kept all the parts for the factory Watts link, but I think that a Watts link is worth keeping if it's already been engineered and I should have done that it, because it's gonna help the axle go straight up and down smoothly and not follow an arc like you get out of a pan hard bar. But the problem is it's not worth just building from scratch. I don't wanna build a Watts link from scratch. It's way too time consuming. There's too many moving parts. And so for simplicity, we just went with a good old fashioned pan hard bar. A pan hard bar on the rear suspension with radius arms is not ideal if you have a lot of articulation, but we're gonna have very little articulation and we made our pan hard bar long enough and flat enough that we shouldn't have any binding with the radius arms as the axle goes straight up and down. But in a perfect world, I would have just kept the stuff from Land Rover and uh, done the Watts link. So the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna pull this out of here. We're gonna start finish welding. I wanna build some sort of a cover for the front of the axle, and um, I don't know, maybe by the end of the video we can start painting. I'm very fortunate in the fact that this is a full float axle, meaning that all of the weight from the tires goes on the unit bearings and we don't need axle shafts or a center section. So what I wanna do is figure out a way to template the center section and as I was thinking about it, I was thinking maybe I could use some soapstone and try to like scrub a pattern around some masking tape. So I just took two pieces of paper, I taped them to the housing, I used the soapstone and I rubbed the bolt pattern onto the tape and then I was able to cut and use that as a template to drill our holes.
You're gonna have to bear with me, folks. I lost my voice over the last three days. My kids gave me the sniffles. My son probably got it at preschool, just dad stuff. So I have been tinkering out here as much as I can, but I've been trying to rest up so I'm not sick for like two weeks and I'm just sick for three or four days. The axle, I did come out here. I mounted the axle. The axle is painted. The axle is like centered. It, it, I torqued the lug nuts. I mean, the thing is ready to go. And uh, the shocks are doing exactly what they're supposed to do. I mean, that those shocks just instantly dampen any movement out of this trailer, which is exactly what we needed. Because before, when the shocks weren't mounted, you'd push, you'd touch this thing and it would move around for like 20 seconds. So the next video is gonna be a huge one. I wanna get this painted. We've got a aluminum border we gotta build. We've got a couple of small details we gotta solve. And then we can wrap it and we can start to like assemble it. It's gonna be a very exciting video. And then after that, it's just gonna be all the electrical, which will be a big video, all the plumbing, and I'd like to have a lot of plumbing in this. So here in the next three episodes, I would guess, this should be really close to hitting the trail, which is pretty exciting. If you wanna help support the channel, you go to thedirtlifestyle.com. We have sweatshirts, we have t-shirts, we have hats, all that kind of stuff, stickers, and uh, we have a link to our Patreon account as well. If you've been following me on social media, I'm at Dirt Lifestyle Nate. We'll see you next time.